So this video is going to be showing you how to replace a serpentine belt and a timing belt on a 2012 Ford Fiesta. Here's some of the parts you'll need. This here is a uh, M14 crankshaft pulley bolt. This is for my tensioner pulley bolt. Uh, this is the uh, installation tool for your serpentine belt since it's a stretched fit. You'll attach this to your crank pulley and then it'll just kind of rotate like this around your crank pulley and it'll just stretch it on there. Uh, some bolts for this little hanger that will guide your belt to make sure it doesn't fall off. Uh, make sure you get a Ford belt because these are about $50. You can get a cheap $15 belt at you know, your auto parts store, but who knows if they actually stretch well or not. So I recommend getting the Ford official part. Here's all the uh, timing uh, belt equipment. So I got these three parts here in a kit from Amazon. It's about $106. Uh, this part here was for the back of the crankshafts, or the camshafts, and I don't think I'm going to actually need to use that because that's only if you're going to do some actual camshaft work. Uh, the only thing you really need is this uh, camshaft gear lock tool and then this is the top dead center pin that you insert in the back of the uh, engine. Kind of, It's right behind the uh, cam or the drive shaft so it's going to be a little bit tight to get to. Uh, here's the timing belt tensioner pulley. It's an automatic tensioner. So all you have to do is install this. I guess it, I'm guessing these tangs just go into the body of the engine, and then you pull this pin once you get the belt on there to release the tension. Uh, got the timing belt here. Uh, it's the official Ford part. Uh, you can get these at auto parts stores too, but I think this was I think this was about thirty dollars. Thing you're gonna to want to do is take your right front wheel off. Then there's an accessory belt drive cover, which is right here. You will remove that with two bolts located here and there, and that'll just pop off and that'll reveal the crank pulley look after you get that cover taken off so you can see the crank pulley there and the AC pulley. The other thing you have to do is take this coolant tank out. You have two clips, one right there and one right there. And I'll probably just lay it on top of the engine or just kind of off to the side. You take the engine mount out, you want to jack up your engine on the left, on the right side. Uh, use a bottle jack and some wood so it doesn't put any stress, too much centralized stress on the engine casing, so just want to do that before you take the mount out. What I'm going to do is take the right motor mount out. Uh, the guide says to take the water pump pulley out down there, but I figured it would be easier to take the motor mount out first, so I'm going to do that. Yeah. Uh, engine mount out. Uh, we had a little trouble with these bolts here because these were uh, 18 millimeter. So our, we didn't have a deeper socket. All we had is a normal one, which the drive couldn't get in all the way into the socket. So we had to use a, a regular box end wrench to uh, pry the, get the tension off of it and then just get it loose enough to get the socket on there. And that seemed to work. And then, uh, the uh, smaller bolts here are 15 millimeter. Motor mount out. Uh, then I went ahead and took a 10 mil wrench to break loose the uh, bolts on the water pump pulley there. Well, it still has tension from the belt, and then we're going to go ahead and cut the belt off. My diagonal cutters. And there's the belt off off so but I skipped a step on taking the alternator off 
which I believe these bolts go all the way well this one goes all the way to the this piece here we need to take off because we need to take that off to fit the timing lock tool onto the cam so we have to get, take these two bolts off which I think this one goes all the way into the block so we got the alternator off and this steel cover I don't know, I guess just for support for the alternator. Uh, so you got that out. One bolt had a, uh, a fitting like this. So I guess it's like a Torx Allen, so it's like a male Torx. Uh, so you can either go to the store and get a female Torx uh, socket, or you can use what we did and use a quarter inch 12 point socket. And it fit really snug and it just popped it right out, so that's a little tip for that. This may save you some money. Uh, I don't know, I just kind of laid the alternator to the side because it's not really going to be in the way. Uh, next thing we'll do is getting the timing set, so we'll get turn the uh, crank. Or actually, we got to get put the uh, top dead center pin in the back of the engine. So we can find top dead center and make sure the cam pulleys are in position. Then we'll put the tool in. So uh, that's what we'll do next. We're finding the top dead center pin location. So there's a blank plug in the back of the engine right here by the crank pulley. Uh, it is right there. Let me get the light there. There it is. Okay. So there's the... I pulled the plug out. Uh, it is above the oil line, so no oil leaks out. Uh, then you'll just take the pin, put it in there all the way, and then we'll turn the crank clockwise until it stops against the pin. And that's top dead center. Got the sprocket lock it, locking tool in. Uh, took a little work to get in there. It's, I didn't know that the uh, exhaust, exhaust cam sticks out further than the intake. You can see there's a little offset, which I didn't know that. Uh, but it, at first it didn't seem to go. It seemed to be just like a half a millimeter off, but then we, we were able to work it in there. So uh, It's pretty tight, so it didn't just slip right on. Uh, but yeah, top dead center. So right there you can see the circle mark and that matches up with the circle on the locking tool. And on the other side you have a slash there and a uh, slash on the sprocket. Okay so then the next step is you gotta put a flywheel locking tool in which I didn't want to get because it's about 80 bucks and you have to get it on eBay so there's not really a reputable place to get one. Uh, so I don't know if this is the official place to put the locking tool. I have a feeling it's not. But I found an opening here on the back next to the drive shaft. Uh, I'm looking from the passenger side to the driver's side. Uh, but you can see the teeth of the flywheel in there. So I'm going to take a small and eh, medium sized flathead screwdriver uh, and then just wedge it in there. Okay, so now I've got the screwdriver in there, just right in the teeth. I don't know if you can quite see that. I'm not focusing very well, but it's probably about three eighths of an inch into the teeth. So I think that'll work. We'll just have to have someone hold the screwdriver in while I'm torquing on the fly or the crankshaft pulley bolt. Okay, so we got the crank pulley pulled off, and. That was really tight because that's about 100, well, 100 newton meters on it, which is about 73 foot pounds. Uh, so yeah, I had to use a gear bar, of course. Uh, so I got that off. So now I'm taking the lower timing belt cover off, which is just these three bolts, uh, which are eight millimeter tensioner to release tension. There's these two tangs on here. So basically, you just want to push them up like this. 
and then I just put a nail in them to hold them. Kind of. Yeah, so, you know, he gets the idea. So, put that in there. That'll release all the tension. You can take the tensioner out if you want. I recommend replacing it if you're doing a timing belt. So, cause that's, if that fails, that's going to be catastrophic. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and that's how you release the tension. So, now I've got the tensioner pulley pulled out, which goes right to that hole there. Uh, got a new one here with the new bolts. I test I reverse tested torque, which how well that works. Well okay I torqued it up to twenty pounds and the bolt turns so it doesn't have any more than that so I'll probably torque it to eighteen pounds or something like that. Uh, so it doesn't need too much. Uh, the old belt's still on here. I'm gonna take that off and I uh, put this pulley on. So we got the new timing belt on. I still need to release the tensioner pin, so it'll put tension on it. But mainly we want to start wrapping the, the belt around the crank, work up to your uh, intake cam, over to your exhaust cam, and then back down around to your tensioner pulley. And then I counted from your hash mark here to the tooth right before your circle mark here, your dot, uh, is 12 teeth to be, so that way if you miss a tooth and it's a little loose or something, you, know, you might have 13, so just make sure it's 12 teeth between those, starting with the one to the right of the hash mark is the first one you count. So, so it'd be one, starting one right here to 12 right here before the mark. So basically 12 teeth between the marks. The timing belt on, we need to go ahead and put the uh, lower cover back on. Uh, and then we'll put the crank pulley on, torque that down, and then we'll do some... We'll turn the engine to make sure it's in time. So when putting the new, uh, or putting the crank pulley back on, you want to use a brand new bolt because these are stress bolts. So once you torque them to the recommended strength, they will not, they will, they could work another time, but you wouldn't want to chance it. So always get a new bolt. Uh, so we'll torque this down to 73 foot-pounds, then plus 90 degrees, and then you'll wait about 20 seconds, and then you'll torque it another 15 degrees. So now I've got the crankshaft pulley torqued and everything, so now he's got to turn it, or it took the timing tools out, the pin and the camshaft lock tool. So now we're going to turn the crank a uh, quarter and three, well, one and three quarter turns. And uh, then we'll put all the timing tools back in, make it back to top dead center, and make sure all the marks still line up. So that way we know our belt is aligned correctly.